Welcome to Open Source Options. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use Python to download multiple files in parallel. And I just want to point out that all the code for this tutorial will be up on the website opensourceoptions.com and there's a link in the description. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using a Jupyter Notebook inside of Visual Studio Code for this tutorial. We're going to start out by just doing some imports. So we're going to import time, um, just to time things. We're going to import requests, and this is going to be give us the functionality to download URLs. And then we're going to, from multiprocessing, we're going to import CPU count, and from multiprocessing, we're going to import thread pool. Oh, I need to type import. Import thread pool. I'm going to double check that since it didn't autocomplete, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. I made one slight mistake from multiprocessing dot pool import, and this should autocomplete, and we'll just double check it. Thread pool. There we go. Okay, so we've got time for timing, request for downloading URLs, um, multiprocessing is going to give us the number of computer cores we have, and we're going to use the thread pool to parallelize things with. Now, all these are part of the Python standard library, so you shouldn't have to do any installs. I'm going to hit Shift Enter to run this cell, and I'm going to run it with my base uh, Anaconda environment. All right, so that's going to take just a sec to run and get those imports, and now we can start writing some actual code. So the next thing I'm going to do is define some URLs to download. I'm just going to paste these over. These are for GridMet data, which provide you know climate and weather data, and so we're looking at precipitation for four different years here. Uh, these files are on order of tens of megabytes large. Maybe maybe it's hundreds. I don't remember. They're they're not small files, but they're not ginormous files either. And then I'm going to get another list here. I'm going to copy it over. That's going to be the file names to download these files too. So let's paste those file names over here. And I'm just downloading these to my downloads directory. So you can see here that I have a list URLs of the URLs and a list FNs of the file names. And these are what I want to download. So let's just go ahead here and hit Shift Enter. In okay, case so we have those defined. Now, to make things a little easier to work with, I want to combine the URLs and file names into a single iterable. And what I mean by that is I want to have, and that will give me just one variable, one iterable that I can pass into a function, and that'll make it simpler when we parallelize. And let me show you what I mean here. So let's make an inputs variable, and we're going to say that it is equal to zip, and we're going to zip together the URLs and the file names. Okay, I'm going to double check my code here, make sure I have it right, and then we'll run it. Okay, this should be correct. Um, before I run it though, let's just do, uh, let's go for i in input print i. And so we'll run this and then we'll print it out so you can see what it looks like. So if I hit shift enter, enter and you can see what I get here is an iterable of tuples. And so I have a tuple, and in that tuple, I have the URL and the file associated with that URL, and those are all contained now in this inputs variable. So now that we know what our input data look like, we can start to build some functions to download these URLs to the associated file names. So let's get started on that next. So what I want to do is I'm going to make a function called download URL. And I'm going to be able to use this function to download any URL to a file name. I'm going to input args, arguments. Okay. Now, my arguments are going to be URL and FN, and they're going to equal args 0 and args 1. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in, pass in this iterable with a tuple, so that one tuple is going to be an input. It has two elements. The first one's the URL. The second one is the file name. Okay. And then I'm going to put in a try accept statement here. So we're going to try r equals requests.get URL. So we're going to try to download that. 
And if we don't, we're going to type in accept exception as E. And we're going to print out problem downloading. And then we'll print out the error message we get. Okay, this isn't the full function. We're going to go back and fill some things in here so that it's uh, a little easier to, to time and understand. So we're going to give it a, a T0, T0, start time, which is going to be time dot time. All right, and so that will start our timer. Um, and then at the end, we're going to get the time again. And so we're going to come down here and we're going to print um, URL. And we're going to print URL. And then we're going to print time. And this is going to be in seconds. And then we're going to print time dot time minus T naught or T zero. And that will tell us how long it took to download each specific URL. Now I forgot one important thing here, and we have to actually create the file and write to it. And so we're going to do with open. And we're going to give it the file name. We're going to give it um, the write, which is write binary uh, as f. And we're going to do f dot write, and we're going to do r dot content. So it's going to write the content from the URL. And what I actually want to do here is instead of printing this, I want to return. So we're going to return the URL and the time. So we'll know the URL and how long it took, and we can print that out when we get to the other function. So let me just double check my notes and make sure I have this function correct, and then we'll move on from here. Okay, so we should be good with this function. Let's go ahead and run this cell. So our functions now run, and let's try to download all of these URLs using our download URL function. Now, this is not in parallel yet, but we can use this function to parallelize it later. And by doing this, we'll get an idea of how long it takes. So let's do 4i in inputs, and let's do result equals download URL. We'll pass in i, and then let's print URL, uh, and then result 0, because we're returning a tuple in our result. And then let's uh, also print time seconds. And uh, result 1. And then let's come up here and let's add another t naught variable. t0 equals time dot time. And then let's come down here and print uh, total download time. This is going to be in seconds again. Is uh, this will be once again time dot time minus t naught, and so we'll print that out. So this is going to loop through all our input files. It's going to download each one, and then we're going to print out how long it took to download that specific file. And then when we're finished, we're going to print out the total time it took. So let's go ahead and do this. This is not in parallel. It's in serial. I'm going to click run. I'm going to pause the video while it starts because it's going to take probably about a minute. So let's hit shift enter to run that. And we get an error. Let's see. Total time. Oh, it's because I need to put parentheses on this function call. Let's try that again. All right, here we go. And something happened. that it didn't run. Let me just check this real quick. All right, let's make one quick change to our code. Let's get rid of this line. Um, we're going to loop through the inputs because we don't actually need that. And then come up here and let's restart our kernel for the outputs of all cells. And then let's go ahead and just run through our code again. We'll do the imports, we'll get the URLs, We'll define the inputs, we'll define the function, and now we'll loop through all the inputs uh, 
to download. So let's go ahead and hit shift enter. And you can see here that now we've printed out, I added this one line just to print which files are being downloaded, just to see that it's working. And you can see that we're starting to download here. And this should take just a few seconds to download the first file. Then I'll pause the video while it downloads the rest of the files so that you can, uh, don't have to wait for that. So you can see we downloaded our first URL, it took about 20 seconds. I'm now going to pause the video while the downloads finish and we can see what the total download time is. Okay, so the file download finished. You can see that it took just under two minutes to complete this in a loop. Now, instead of performing a traditional loop, we're going to write another function that will use our download URL function and apply it in parallel so we can download all four of these files simultaneously and it will greatly decrease the total download time. So let's go ahead and do that now. So def, we're going to call this download parallel. It's going to take the same arguments as download URL. Now let's go ahead and um, the, get, the, get the CPU count. And so we're going to say CPUs uh, equals CPU count, which we called. And then we need to set up a thread pool. And this thread pool, we're going to tell it how many threads to run, which we're going to derive from CPU count. And then we are going to tell it which function to parallelize and which arguments to apply to that function. And keep in mind that download parallel, or when we call this function, we're going to get this return type, which is going to be a URL and a time. And so we want to give it results equals thread pool. Here we're going to do CPUs. Uh, we'll do minus one, so we'll just to make sure that we have um, enough computation for other things if we're running other things. And then we're going to use IMAP unordered. This means the order that, that uh, the arguments are run in does not matter. And then we're going to give it the function, which is download URL, and we're going to give it the arguments. And now we can loop through the results and print them out. So we can do four result in results. And this is just going to tell us each URL and how long it took to reload to, or to download. So let's do print um, URL and result zero. And then let's print uh, time seconds and result one. Okay. And that should be the function we need. So let me just go ahead and make sure I have this right. I'll check my notes, then we'll come back and get this thing running. All right, let's hit shift enter to run this cell. Make sure there are no errors there. And now let's go ahead and run this. We're going to time it again. So let's do time dot, or let's do a T naught equals time dot time. And then I'm going to do inputs equals zip URLs, FNs, just to make sure that's the clean inputs uh, iteratable. And then we're going to uh, just run download parallel with inputs. And then we'll print total download time in seconds is time dot time minus T naught. All right, and that should be everything we need to run this in parallel. So let me hit shift enter and we'll see how much faster this runs. All right, I'm gonna pause the video while this finishes running and then we'll take a look at the output. Okay, the file's finished downloading and you'll notice that it only took 33 seconds. So it was almost four times faster than our other method which took 113 seconds. Now you'll notice if we add up all these numbers, we get pretty close to 113, the download time of each individual file here. But if we add up the individual download times here for the parallel version, we get a number much higher than 33. In fact, 33 is the time it took for the longest file to download. So you can see that these were all downloading in parallel and it printed them out in the order in which they completed. 
So there you have how you can download files in parallel. I hope you found this useful. It's something I use all the time when I need to download a large number of files. I hope this can help you out in your programming work.